We're now in Numbers and Deuteronomy for Beginners, Faithful in the Face of Challenge. That's the name of our series. Uh, today, lesson number seven, and we begin the book of Deuteronomy, uh, subtitled Reiteration and Reminder. And so the term Deuteronomy derives from the Greek words deuteros, meaning second, and nomos, meaning law. Thus, uh, Deuteronomy can be understood to mean second law or repetition of the law. Um, Deuteronomy is essentially a series of speeches delivered by Moses to the new generation of Israelites, a generation that had not experienced the events firsthand uh, in the, um, in the uh, desert. As such, Moses takes this opportunity to recount their history, to reiterate the laws and the commandments given by God, and also to renew the covenant between God and the people. In many ways, Deuteronomy serves as a recapitulation and reinterpretation of the laws and events recorded in the book of Numbers, which we have already covered. It also emphasizes the importance of obedience to God's commands and the blessings that come with obedience, while also warning against the consequences of disobedience. The book of Deuteronomy is structured as a, a kind of a, a farewell address by Moses as he prepares to pass the mantle of leadership to Joshua and the Israelites prepare to enter the promised land. It also serves as a crucial bridge between the wilderness experiences recorded in Numbers and the conquest and the settlement of the promised land depicted in subsequent books like Joshua and uh, other books. I want to uh, outline some differences and similarities between the book of Numbers, now that we've completed it, and the book of Deuteronomy, which we're beginning today. So here are five similarities and five differences between these two books that'll help you uh, retain the main content of each of the books. So let's start with the um, similarity, shall we? First of all, historical continuity. Both books are part of the Pentateuch the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, and they continue the narrative of the Israelite journey from Egypt uh, to the uh, promised land. Secondly, second similarity, divine guidance. In both books, God provides guidance and instructions to the Israelites through Moses. Number three, there's an emphasis on the idea of covenant. Both Numbers and Deuteronomy emphasize the covenant between God and the Israelites. The covenant terms, including blessings for obedience and consequences for disobedience, are reiterated in both of these books. Number four, leadership transition. Both books deal with a transition of leadership from Moses to Joshua. In Numbers, Joshua is appointed as Moses' successor. And in Deuteronomy, Moses commissions Joshua as the new leader to replace himself. And then finally, inclusion of laws and regulations. Both books contain laws and regulations given by God to the Israelites, covering various aspects of their lives, including religious practices, social conduct, and justice. We move on to five differences between these two books. Number one, the narrative focus of each book is different. Numbers focuses more on the events that occur during the Israelites wandering in the wilderness, including census data, tribal arrangements, and incidents of rebellion. Deuteronomy, on the other hand, primarily consists of Moses' speeches to the new generation of Israelites, summarizing their history, and as we've said before, reiterating the laws and the commands from God. Secondly, the geographical setting. Numbers predominantly takes place in the wilderness as the Israelites journey from Mount Sinai to the borders of the promised land, while Deuteronomy is set only in the plains of Moab, just before the Israelites are about to enter the uh, promised land. Number three, the literary style. Uh, numbers is more historical and narrative in nature, recounting events and occurrences. So when you read Numbers, you're reading, they went here, they did this, they stopped there, they camped here, Moses did this, the people did, you know, it's a narrative, it, you can follow it. Um, uh, whereas Deuteronomy 
has a more sermonic or exhortative style, meaning uh, Moses is delivering speeches and reminders to the uh, Israelites. There's not a lot of narrative action in the book of Deuteronomy. Number four, the content emphasis. Numbers focuses more on the organization and the structure of the Israelite camp. Remember I gave you a slide that showed you where all the tribes camped around the uh, tabernacle. Also uh, Numbers talks about the responsibilities of the priests and of the Levites and also incidents of uh, rebellion and punishment. Deuteronomy on the other hand emphasizes the importance of obedience to God's laws, the consequences of disobedience and the renewal of the covenant. And then finally the time frame covered. Numbers covers a span of about 40 years during the Israelites' wilderness wanderings, while Deuteronomy spans only a few months, primarily Moses' final speeches to the uh, Israelites before his, uh, before his death. Uh, let's do a uh, summary now of uh, chapters one to four. Chapters one to four of the book of Deuteronomy involve Moses, as I've said before, addressing the Israelites as they prepare to enter the promised land. These uh, first four chapters are a blend of historical review, motivational discourse, and instruction meant to prepare the people for their impending conquest and settlement. So here's an orderly explanation of the key events and instructions contained within these first four chapters along with their significance. So we begin with chapter one, historical review and exhortation. Here there's the retelling of the appointment of the leaders, uh, Deuteronomy chapter one, verses nine to 18. So Moses recalls how he appointed leaders and judges to help manage and govern the people, emphasizing the need for wise and the uh, discerning uh, leadership. The significance, well, as they stand on the brink of entering Canaan, Moses reminds the people of the importance of just leadership in order to maintain order and justice uh, when they enter and settle the uh, new land. Also, there's the uh, recounting of the spies and the, the uh, people's rebellion that had taken place. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1, 19 to 46. Moses recounts the episode of the spies sent to scout the land of Canaan and the subsequent rebellion against God's command due to fear, which led to 40 years of wandering in the, uh, in the wilderness. Uh, this review serves as a warning against disobedience and lack of faith in God's promises, stressing the consequences of such uh, actions. If God uh, could do this before, uh, because, you know, due to their disobedience, He could do it again, even if they were uh, in the uh, promised land. Uh, in chapter two, uh, we have the journey and the command to avoid conflict. So there's the travel through the wilderness. In chapter two, one to 23, Moses details their travels through the wilderness and instructions to avoid conflict with the Edomites, the Moabites, and the Ammonites, uh, as these lands were not given to the Israelites by God. This highlights the sovereignty of God in determining the inheritance of nations and the importance of respecting God's allocation to others. In other words, uh, God is sovereign not only over the Israelites and what land they can take, but He's also uh, sovereign over all lands uh, that other nations uh, dwell in, even if they don't recognize Him. Uh, he also talks about the conquest of the Transjordan. Moses discusses the battles against Sion, king of Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan, emphasizing God's role in their, uh, in their victories. Uh, and this, of course, prepares the Israelites for future conquests in Canaan by demonstrating God's power and faithfulness in giving them victory over their enemies. The idea being, he tells, you know, he recounts the battles that they've won in the past. The idea is he helped them win battles in the past They'll have battles in the future and he'll be there to help them win those battles um, as well. Uh, chapter three uh, has a further review of the Transjordan conquests. Uh, for example, the defeat of Og in uh, Deuteronomy three verses one to 11. Here there's a detailed account of the conquest of Og, the king of Bashan, 
and his territories. This acts, uh, acts as a, uh, a reassurance of God's support and, and the divine gift of land bolstering the morale of the, uh, of the Israelites. There's also uh, information about the distribution of the Transjordan in chapter three, verses 12 to 22. Moses recounts the allocation of land to the tribes of Reuben and Gad and the, the half tribe of Manasseh. The significance here is that this emphasizes the need for unity and mutual support among the tribes as those settled must help others in conquering the rest of Canaan. We learn that these three tribes uh, uh, preferred to settle on the eastern side of the uh, Jordan uh, River. And there was some uh, murmuring, if you wish, uh, that uh, Moses would allow them to settle there. Uh, and the uh, resolution was uh, they would be allowed to leave their animals and their families and so on and so forth uh, in these lands, but the men would go across the river uh, and help their, uh, their brethren uh, to settle their own uh, lands. And when that was done, they would return to the lands on the eastern side of the uh, Jordan uh, rivers. Also, uh, Moses himself is forbidden to enter the land of Canaan, chapter 3, 23 to 29. He shares his personal disappointment at not being allowed to enter the promised land. And the significance of this is that it serves as a powerful reminder of the seriousness of obeying God's commands and the personal consequences of failing to do so. Even Moses, when he was disobedient, was punished uh, by God. And then in chapter four, uh, there are exhortations to obedience and uh, care for the law. Uh, a call to obedience, chapter four, verses one to 40. Uh, Moses urges the Israelites to adhere strictly to the laws given by God, warning against idolatry and encouraging them to teach these laws to their children and to their children's children. Of course, the significance here, he establishes the legal and religious framework that will govern their life in Canaan, ensuring their success and survival as a nation devoted to God. The idea being you'll succeed in the new land if you obey God's commands and if you teach them and teach this uh, spirit of obedience to your children, this is what will guarantee your peace and your safety and your prosperity in the promised land. Not how big your army is or how good a farmer you are or a, a sheep herder or whatever, no. It's all based on maintaining the covenant of obedience with God. And then also in chapter four, there uh, is um, information about the cities of refuge, chapter 4, 41 to 43. The establishment of cities of refuge uh, east of the uh, Jordan River. Significance here is that it illustrates the provision of justice and mercy within the legal system of Israel, providing sanctuaries for those who are accused of manslaughter until they can obtain a fair trial and we've talked about this before, but here in chapter four, it shows that even on the eastern side of the Jordan, uh, cities, of res uh, cities of refuge were established there so that uh, someone needing that refuge uh, had access to it, whether he was on the west side or east side of the river, there were cities uh, allotted for both uh, areas. So these chapters in Deuteronomy serve not only as a recap of the Israelites' journey, but also as a critical set of instructions and warnings designed to ensure their success and their fidelity to God as they prepare to finally enter the land promised to their ancestors, and now they are about to enter into those uh, promises. Uh, next section are uh, lessons that are learned from failure and uh, success. In Deuteronomy chapters one to four, Moses addresses the Israelites as they prepare to enter the promised land, recounting their past experiences of failures and successes. And through these recollections, he imparts several vital lessons essential for their future prosperity and fidelity. And so here are four basic lessons that Moses teaches about their past failures and successes. Lesson number one, 
there are consequences for disobedience and lack of faith, always. The context here is that Moses reminds the Israelites of their failures to trust in God's promise when they refused to enter the promised land after the negative report from the, from the spies. The lesson here is that he stresses that disobedience to God's commands and lack of faith in his promises lead to dire consequences, such as the 40 years of wandering and the denial of entry into the land for an entire generation. This teaches the importance of obedience and trust in God's guidance. If God tells you what to do, uh, you need to follow through on that because the consequences uh, can be quite uh, severe. Uh, lesson number two, strong leadership and wise judgment are necessary for success. As Moses reflects on the past, he recounts how he appointed leaders and judges to help manage the people and make wise decisions. Chapter Deuteronomy 1, 9 to 18. The lesson here is the importance of having capable and fair leadership is underscored. Moses teaches that leaders must be just, unbiased, and fear God, ensuring that they handle disputes wisely and maintain order within the community. Remember, he's not crossing over with them. They won't be able to bring their hard cases to him. So he's talking to those who have served already as judges and magistrates, and he's encouraging them to continue their ministry once they go into the promised land. Lesson number three, God's faithfulness in providing and protecting are always there, always there. Here, Moses revisits the victories over Sion and Og, the kings of the Amorites, as clear demonstrations of God's power and commitment to his people. Uh, we forget that the Jews, uh, they left Egypt. They had no army, there was no military training. They were slaves, they were workers. They didn't have an organized uh, and well-trained military to defend themselves. God was the one who was defending them uh, in the wilderness. And the promise here is that even though they're going to go in and have military campaigns led by Joshua, he still is the one that will uh, gain the victories uh, uh, for, the, um, uh, for the people. Uh, and so even in the face of formidable, en formidable enemies, God's intervention on behalf of his people ensures their success. It's not how big their army is, it's how big their God is. That's what counts and that's what Moses is reviewing with them. This uh, teaches the Israelites to remember and rely on God's proven faithfulness and power as they face new challenges. You know, he's wanting them to remember this when they enter in and when they're facing a, you know, a tribe, a nation, a city, a fortified city, and they have a moment of weakness, a moment of fear, a moment of, uh, of doubt, of hesitation. He's telling them, remember the past, remember what God has done for you in the past when facing uh, uh, very large uh, obstacles. And then finally, learning from mistakes equips you for future vigilance. Moses shares his personal disappointment at being forbidden by God to enter the promised land due to his own transgression at the waters of Meribah. The lesson here is that Moses uses his own failure as a powerful reminder of the need for constant vigilance in obedience to God. It teaches that even leaders are not exempt from the consequences of disobedience and thus continual self-examination and adherence to God's law are uh, crucial. And so the overall message uh, with all of this, uh, through all of these lessons, uh, Moses aims to prepare the new generation of Israelites, not only to remember the lessons from their past, but also to apply these teachings as they forge ahead into a new phase of their nation's history. This uh, preparation is critical for ensuring that they do not repeat the mistakes of the past and are ready to live successfully and righteously in the future in the promised land. Well, we go from lessons that Moses was teaching them to modern day lessons for readers today. The first four chapters of Deuteronomy are rich 
with historical recaps and exhortations and foundational lessons that provide invaluable insights for modern Christian readers. So here are three simple yet profound lessons derived from these chapters for us today as we make our way through the wilderness of this modern and unbelieving world. Lesson number one, learn from past mistakes. In Deuteronomy 1, Moses recounts the story of the spies who were sent to explore Canaan and how the Israelites' fear and lack of faith resulted in a 40-year punishment of wandering in the wilderness. The modern application here is uh, this lesson emphasizes the importance of learning from past mistakes and not allowing fear to prevent faithful action. Christians today are encouraged to trust in God's guidance and not repeat the mistakes of disbelief and disobedience that can lead to you know, spiritual stagnation, even loss of one's faith. Lesson number two, obey God's word. It's very important to obey God's word. Throughout the early chapters, Moses reiterates the importance of obeying God's commands as a key to success and prosperity. And he warns against adding or subtracting from God's commands. The modern application, this underscores for Christians today, the importance of adhering strictly to the teachings of scripture, to the teachings of Jesus. It serves as a reminder to respect the integrity of God's word and apply it fully in life without compromise, without recognize, excuse me, without compromise and still recognizing its authority and completeness. We are still guided by God's word today. And then one more lesson, God is still able to provide even today. You know, Moses recalls God's faithfulness in guiding and providing for the Israelites through their wilderness journey, particularly their victories over those two kings, King Sion and King Og. This narrative reminds Christians of God's continued faithfulness and his ability to provide in times of need. It encouraged believers today to remember and rely on God's past faithfulness as a foundation for trusting him in current challenges, reinforcing the belief in God's active presence and help in our lives today. If he did it then, he can and will do it now for those who believe and trust in him. That always remains. Uh, and that lesson is for us today. And if the Lord doesn't return for another thousand years, that lesson will remain valid for the next thousand years. God provides for his people uh, in the past, today, and in the future. So uh, these chapters of Deuteronomy serve not only as a historical recount for the Israelites, but also as spiritual and practical lessons for contemporary Christians today. They, they highlight themes of learning from history, uh, adhering faithfully to God's teachings, and trusting in his enduring faithfulness, principles that guide effective and faithful Christians today. Faithful uh, followers uh, like the Israelites back then, faithful Christians today, uh, faithful Christians tomorrow and to the end of time when Jesus returns. Okay, so that's the beginning of Deuteronomy, the first uh, four chapters. I want to give you an assignment as always, a reading assignment, reread chapters one to four and with the information you've gotten from this class, hopefully uh, the uh, chapters themselves will become uh, much more meaningful uh, for you. And then go ahead and read Deuteronomy chapters five to 11 and these we will cover in our next lesson if the Lord is willing. That's it for today. Thank you for your attention. We'll see you soon.